Hey everybody, sorry about this. My, uh, my computer crashed on me. So I'm getting a bit of a late start. New camera. Oh, by the way, go ahead and skip to 10 minutes if, you, if you're watching the uh, replay. But uh, I have a new camera. I have... Um, I have a new camera, I have uh, uh, a new program that I'm using to, to uh, stream from, so you get to see cool shit like what my program looks like while I'm recording. And got better sound because you're actually getting it from here. Yeah, well, what I did was I... Since I'm st I started a using this new program, and I was actually trying to get, um, I was actually trying to get a new screen for, uh, for like the first ten minutes. I, I was gonna have a screen with music, and uh, uh, it just says you know what the name of the show is, and it has the like it says skip ahead ten minutes if if you're watching a replay. But, um, yeah, I was trying to export that, and that's when my computer crashed, and then it took me about 10 minutes to actually get it to start back up. So, what's up? All right, so now I'm actually using... Now I'm actually using my... Uh, is, it, is it still low? Hello. I don't know if I can boost it. Maybe I'll just boost. There's another. There's another mic on my camera. How's that? <laughs> well, I think uh, I'm not. I'm not too mad at my. Uh, I'm not too mad at my computer because I was running it pretty hard for. Um, I was running it pretty hard uh, with with my. I was actually trying to use uh, um, After Effects to create the to create the screen, but it was taking too long. So I just went back to uh, just went back to Premiere and made something quick in there. But then that's what crashed my computer. I was doing a lot of extra stuff, a bit echoey. Maybe I can turn it down a little more. Actually, I forgot to put on socks, and my feet make these sticky sounds, so I'll be right back. And to prove it... <laughs> wow, you were in the devil. Socks again. I keep going to that one. I wish I could, uh, I wish I could see more of the feed through my iPad. I can see the, the chat, but I can't see who's on the chat. Yeah, there's no way to look at that when you're on the iPad. How much time do I have left? All right, five more minutes. Back to the fade. This one's better. Oh, I need water, son of a bitch. A lot of computer work today.
How's everybody else doing? How many people we have here? God, that sucks that I can't look. Whispers, friends, online. Well, look, there's no, no way to look. I'm really excited for this book. It's quite possibly the goofiest thing I will have narrated. And that makes me happy. You see five? I hope that's accurate. I hope there's at least five people. Nope. Really? Channel feed? Oh, I still have my be right back thing up. Okay. Oh, fancy. Well, the I'm not streaming through my iPad anymore. I'm streaming through my computer. So... And I'm hoping that will actually improve the, the quality of the stream as well, not just because I got this new camera, but because um, the internet probably runs through my computer faster than my iPad. So uh, hopefully the hosting will have been improved because of that. Rolling shutter happening. It's interesting. You can you can like see the reflection, or you can see what I'm seeing here. Ugh, that must be confusing. There's like r reflections everywhere. Sartoro, your cat. Nine minutes, one more minute, and we'll get started. <laughs> Sun, cat, same thing. One probably eats more. Representing the Conor McGregor today. 60 G's, baby! <clears throat> okay. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Alright, so today... I'm reading, uh, I'm reading from Timothy Dalton's On the Hit List, and uh, this, is, this is my next job. Um, I'm really excited for this one because it's so silly, and I like silly characters. I like 
speaking from the first person with with a really specific type of character like this. Um, and uh, the other characters are, are just absurd. And I, I live for this kind of stuff. This is, this is my favorite kind of stuff. And uh, I'm really excited to show you guys what we got here. So Timothy, thank you for hiring me on this. Um, I really appreciate it. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun developing all these all these people with you. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> Chapter one: The not so normal day. They say you can trace a monumental event in your life back to an exact point in time. And I would say that is true. For example, my uncle said that moment for him was in 1987. He was sitting in a grimy pub when the song Hungry Eyes began playing from a semi-functional jukebox. According to his telling, at that instant he locked eyes with the most gorgeous woman he'd ever seen. Truth be told, my uncle must have been half-blind because I'm not too sure how the most beautiful woman he'd ever laid eyes on transformed into the woman I would later know as Aunt Carol. Or maybe his eyes were just famished. Anyway, back to those shining moments that stick out like a jammed finger after a four-on-four -four shirts versus skins basketball session with the boys at the local Y. As I said, we all have, or will have, that moment, but I never would have thought mine would be the phrase, I'd like the Philly cheesesteak, heavy on the bread. All I ever wanted was a fair shake at life, but I usually end up with an arm bar. I'm just an unlucky guy, and I'm all right with that, I guess. Sometimes you just have to deal with what gets tossed your way, even though it can be a tough road. For me, every superstitious fear can't hold a candle to what follows me around. Or maybe my good friends are just bad influences. But as a general rule, I count on the bad and expect the worst. So, let's back up for a second. My name is Alice D'Angelo, or as my friends call me, Alice D. More easily pronounced, L-S-D. I know it's stupid, and I have stupid friends, but they make the rocking, or rotten, world go round. Queen says fat-bottomed women do, but I digress. I'm basically your average Joe, except, like I said, my name is Alice. I'm a self-proclaimed karaoke master, I love books and video games, and I consider myself a history and big-time movie buff. I like most genres, too. Adventure, mystery, sci-fi, comedy, drama, dramedy, and every other hybrid wannabe mashup. I do, however, skip on romances quite often. The point is, if it's action-packed, I most definitely saw it. If it made a killing at the box office, I 100% made it to the theater. If it was nominated for three-plus categories at the Oscars, I probably never heard of it. And that is just the way it goes. Anyway, as I was saying before I got sidetracked, I'm 19 years old and working on a business degree at Duke University while putting myself through college with little help from my parents. Not because they don't love me, Finances are the issue here. Shortly after starting my freshman year, I began working at Sammy and Sam's sub shop to help fund my degree. This is where I met the proprietor of this lovely establishment. This is not a lovely establishment, unless it's opposite day. So, after meeting the unscrupulous owner, a fellow by the name of Sam Nesbo, it will occur to me about three months later that he wants me dead. Literally dead. So there I was creating the most delicious tuna sub and slicing up a block of Swiss cheese when the phone for Sammy and Sam's sub shop ring. To make things easier, in the future I will refer to it as SSSS. No, strike that, way too many S's. Okay, whatever. It will be called the sub shop instead. There, that sounds better. As per usual, I pick up the phone and say, Sammy and Sam's sub shop! Shit, okay. I promise that's the last time, I swear. I hear the gruffest voice speaking to me through what sounds like a mouthful of jasmine rice and a Big Mac. I'd like the Philly cheesesteak heavy on the bread. This is the weirdest request I've heard aside from an old lady last month who wanted seared ahi tuna and fried eggplant. I know it doesn't seem like that long ago, but remember I just started working at this place. First mistake! First mistake, how- oh man, almost four minutes in. Like 3.50... No, actually, no, it just past four minutes. I know it doesn't seem like that long. <clears throat> oh, 
Where'd, Where'd we go? go? Where'd we go? I, I know it doesn't seem, seem like that long ago, long ago but, but remember, I just started working at this nice restaurant. restaurant. It's really a shithole, and to me it felt like it had been ages. I feel a pressing need to explain the comments in parentheses that will be scattered throughout the... I feel a pressing need to explain the comments in parentheses that will be scattered through the telling of this tale before I continue. These are my most precious thoughts, monologues, internal musings, foreshadowings, or simple statements of fact, or loosely based on facts, in general. I also happen to have these moments quite frequently because I get distracted very easily. That's just how my mind works. It's everywhere, generally, and nowhere in particular, and since I am telling the story, you get to experience everything in all its glory. Mm. Where to go? Where to go? It's everywhere, generally, and nowhere in particular. And since I am telling you the story, uh, it's everywhere, generally, and nowhere in particular. And since I am telling the story, you get to experience everything in all its glory. What I'm thinking, and when I'm thinking it. One doctor said I had ADHD or something along those lines, but I wasn't really paying attention to him. Which reminds me, I need new headphones for my iPod. Anyway, where was I? Oh, right. As I was saying, if you feel that those little tidbits of information are boring, or you just don't like reading too many words, or perhaps you feel they are an invasion of my privacy, then please feel free to skip over them as soon as you see the first parentheses. Or is it parenthesi when the singular? You know what? It doesn't matter. You just do what you do. I won't judge. So, let's get back to the story. As I consider hanging the phone up and pretending the man with the gravelly voice dialed the wrong number, I am reminded that I answered indicating it was indeed a sub shop. Then I contemplate disconnecting by making sounds with my mouth that the call is about to drop. I do neither. I'm in college. Remember? I need this job. I press the phone against my shirt, which appears to have a pink stain on it from a tomato or one of the deli meats. Then I think back and it dawns... Then I think back, and it dawns on me that it was the pink lemonade I had at lunch from Taco Bell. I know what you might be thinking, and yes, I could get free... I know what you might be thinking, and yes, I could get free food here, but I also know how I handle the food here. Hey, Sam! Some guy wants a Philly cheesesteak? Before I can finish, he's yelling at me like he always does. Where are you? Some kind of schmuck? Make him a Philly cheesesteak, you dumb bastard! I ignore his insults due to a thick skin I've developed over the years. Who are you kidding, Ellis? It stings right down to my core. I'm not dumb. I'm going to college for Christ's sake. But all the same, I bury it deep down and hope it doesn't affect my adulthood. He says he wants it heavy on the bread! I pause. Whatever the hell that means. This fat guy, Sam Nesbo moves from the back office faster than I thought his chunky ass could move, snatches the phone from my hands, and fixes me with a quick stare down. Hey, Tony! He bellows, but each word was drawn out for at least two seconds apiece. Uh, gotta do it. Okay, is my keyboard my on? Yeah, it's on. There we go. Excuse me. Oop. Hey, Tony! There we go. That's what we want. But each word was drawn out for at least two seconds apiece. Okay, I gotta do that whole thing again. He bellows, but each word. He bellows, but each word was drawn out for at least two seconds apiece. I shrug, happy to be relieved of the strange call, and go back to the masterpiece of a pastrami sandwich I was making. Damn it! I stare at the sub. I was supposed to be making a tuna on rye. I must have gotten distracted again. I really hate this job, but nothing else is close to the kind. I really hate this job, but nothing else is close to the campus, which is good for me because of my dorm room. And then there are the hot chicks that roll in every minute, on the minute, during the lunch hour. This also happens to be good for me. 
if I forgot to mention it, I'm a bachelor. Right now, I'm stoked because Liz Jenkins from my Biology 201 class came in today and we made plans to watch some snore... I gotta stop doing those things. Uh, because that, that sucky, weird, slurpy thing? Because now you guys are right next to my mouth. There we go. Oh, okay. If I forgot to mention it, I'm a bachelor. If I forgot to mention it, I'm a bachelor. Right now, I'm stoked because Liz Jenkins from my Biology 201 class came in today and we made... Right now, I'm stoked because Liz Jenkins from my Biology 201 class came in today and we made plans to watch some snowboarding documentary called The Art of Flight. Uh, I said, like, some snowboard documentary, like, let's have some snowboard documentary. <laughs> right now, I'm stoked because Liz Jenkins from my Biology 201 class came in today and we made plans to watch some snowboarding documentary called The Art of Flight. I've never seen it, but I'm sure I'll love it. You see, snowboarding is kind of my thing. Liz is super hot. At least that's what I'll be telling everyone later. But in all seriousness... But in all seriousness, she's a 7 in my book. Maybe even edging toward an 8 if she wore just a touch less mess. Ah. But in all seriousness, she's a 7 in my book. Maybe even edging toward an 8 if she wore just a touch less mascara. Remember, ladies, don't over-apply. You can go from cute to scary real quick if not careful. So, Nesbo was still yammering on the phone with Strange Order Guy, and it might just be me, but for some reason he's starting to sound more and more Sicilian by the minute. I'm not really interested in that, though. My eyes are looking at the clock. If Sam doesn't conclude his conversation in two minutes, I get to punch out and head to my dorm to shower without making the filling. Then it happens. The receiver is down, and that fat fuck is coming right over to me. And I know exactly where my next conversation is going. First chapter. Nice introductory chapter. I feel like it says almost everything you need to know about this guy already, just the first chapter. No! This is annoying. Sometimes, sometimes this, uh... Sometimes this program won't let me get to my get to my bar up at the top, and I have to like go to my computer and actually get it done over there. There we go. So, before I go on to this chapter, come on, there we go. Before I go on to this next chapter, I want to go re-listen to the guy on the phone. I don't know if I like him or not. Ooh, I put him in thought, too. That needs to go in calm. See, that's my ethereal thinking track. Let's go down to calm, put him there. Okay, so we got this guy. He's supposed to be gravel, gravelly too, huh? But I really like using this actor for. I really like that guy. Uh, I really like Sam with that voice. So I gotta try something else for this one. I'd like the Philly cheesesteak. How about like that? That sound a little better? I'd like the Philly cheesesteak.
All right, I'm going to redo this guy. I can't remember his name. I'd like the Philly cheesesteak heavy on the bread. And that needs to be fucking thought. There we go. All right, chapter two. <clears throat> chapter two, OT and the delivery. Something is amiss already, and I can feel it in my sternum, chest, gut, or what have you. As anxious as Nesbo is for me to deliver the Philly cheesesteak, he doesn't allow me to make it, which in and of itself sets off alarm bells in my brain, and all I hear is a loud beeping noise. Turn that shit off, Nesbo says. I look down and see my super deluxe and expensive Casio watch alarm is buzzing, telling me my shift is over, but as of now, thanks to this mysterious delivery, it's not. It's a cheap junker of a timepiece that never remains lost for too long. Looks like I will be getting some overtime today. Fun fact about myself, I've only gotten OT a few times in my life and never once been able to get a little dose of that deuce juice. So Nesbo hands me the brick that is the Philly cheese and says I need to deliver somewhere near William B. Umstead State Park. Here's another fact for you. The sub shop is located on West Main Street in Durham. Now, I'm no mathematician, but having a delivery scope beyond a diameter of close to 25 miles seems excessive. This drive will be over 30 miles round trip. Nesbo gives me the address, which indicates the location is just east of the Research Triangle Park. Called... Oops. Called RTP for some, or pretty much everyone in the state of North Carolina. You gotta get it there quick, son, Nesbo says, clearly forgetting it's rush hour and the freeway... Oop, nope. Nesbo says, clearly forgetting it's rush hour and the freeways are going to suck the big one. There's a little something extra in it for you, if everything goes okay, he adds. Goes okay? It's just a stinking delivery, you fat shit. But I say, really? I mean, this could be good for me. Money's been tight lately. Extra cash is always a welcome addition to my life. Yeah, you get to keep your job. Thanks, I say. What a prick. Now, I'm not too inclined to get a ticket just to hand deliver a sub, but at the same time, I'm thinking that if I can get there and back, I just might forego my shower, and maybe I can still catch up with Liz Jenkins for that movie. Also on that list of hopefuls is that she won't mind me smelling like salami and pickles. I mean, after all, she's a nine in my book. It's been a while since my last romantic interlude, and my mind sh It's been a while since my last romantic interlude, and in my mind she's looking better to me every passing moment. Twenty-three minutes later, I'm making my way as dangerously as I can manage, maneuvering through the parked cars on Interstate 40, when a particularly nasty slide makes me lose control of my vehicle and I almost crash into the center divider. If I had collided, the forces of nature would have commanded that both the east and westbound traffic come to an even worse halt than they already are. It's simple science. However, remembering everything I had seen from the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, with calmness... Hmm. With calm effectiveness, I pull myself from the skid and miss the concrete wall separating the rip-roaring traffic. The movement looks very uncool in my Datsun that has bu The movement looks very uncool in my Datsun that has billowing steam emitting from the radiator. I'm actually shrieking like a schoolgirl, and as a secondary reminder, traffic is not really flowing. The second event that happens is the why component of how the precursory phone call from earlier changed my life. The Philly cheesesteak, which was heavy on the bread, scoots right out of the brown bag and onto my passenger floorboard. I'm just pulling off the freeway because I think I see a cop trying to catch me and I really don't need more of a delay in my schedule right now. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. I can't lose anyone if I'm trying to make a getaway. The black cloud of smoke that shoots from the muffler marks my route pretty clear, like jet leaves... Like a jet. Like a jet leaves a contrail. When I regain my breathing and bearings, I make sure I'm in a safe area and reach over to grab the fallen sandwich. 
Nesbo had wrapped and taped the thing up well, so no juice had stained my seat or carpeting. To be fair, though, it would not have changed the aesthetics much. I grabbed the cheap. I grab the cheesesteak, and that's when that earlier feeling of amissness solidifies in my left testicle. I don't think <laughs> I don't think amissness is a real word, but I'm sticking with it, mainly because I don't like to be corrected. Okay, as I'm holding the sandwich, I notice it doesn't feel like a sandwich. And I should know, because I handle them almost every afternoon. What it does feel like is a foot long... <laughs> Damn it. What it does feel like is a one-foot-long brick. My earlier feeling that Nesbo, the cheap bastard, had been gracious by adding extra meat for his friend Tony evaporates. Now, I must explain. I did not sustain any head injuries, but I did have a very close brush with Des. But I did have a very close brush with death. Blech. But I did have a... What is going on? Oh. That's weird. How did that happen? Uh, now. I'm going to start with now. Yeah. Now, I must explain. I did not sustain any head injuries, but I did have a very close brush with death just seconds prior, which must have affected my better judgment. With foolish cat-like curiosity, I open the nicely wrapped cheese stick. I shouldn't really have to divulge what I find, but let's just say it's not the lost ark or the right hand of Jimmy Hoffa. So for the slower people reading my memoirs, I will spell it out. It was eight stacks of $100 bills. I am going to take this little sidebar to point out another obvious. Just because I'm telling the story doesn't mean I make it out a lot. Ooh. Another typo. Just because, I'm telling... Just because I'm telling this story doesn't mean I'm making it out alive. There are at least half a dozen scenarios that could be happening at... There are at least half a dozen scenarios that could happen, maybe? Or could be happening. That all end with me no longer breathing. I'm gonna say could happen. There are at least half a dozen scenarios that could happen that all end with me no longer breathing. It could be that I'm being tortured at this very moment, and I'm simply flashbacking these events in my brain, because as they say, your life flashes before your eyes before you die. For me, it won't take too long, because I've only lived 19 years, and for the first half of that time, I didn't do much that seems important enough to recall. The last half was porn and video games. Recall. I, I need to say recall. Recall. For me, it won't take too long, because I've only lived 19 years, and for the first half of that time, I didn't do much that seems important enough to recall. The last half was porn and video games. Then again, I could be strapped to the driver's seat of my Datsun, a real brick being placed on the gas pedal, and off I go into the Falls Lake or the Neuse River. Neuse? I'm gonna have to look that one up. News pronunciation. News. News. Okay. No. All right. Well, here's what sucks about it not being the official Kindle version. It never saves my place. All right, where are we at? Chapter two. <laughs> Here we go. All right, where were we? A real brick being placed on the gas pedal and off I go. And... Then again. Then again. I could be strapped to the driver's seat of my Datsun, a real brick being placed on the... Hmm. I'm glad I fucked that up, because... 
Uh, this book is On the Hit List by Timothy Dalton. I'm glad I fucked that up because I didn't realize that I fucked it up before. All right. Then again, I could be strapped to the driver's seat of my Datsun, a real brick being placed on the gas pedal, and off I go into the... Ah, fuck. Into Falls Lake or the Noose River. Then again, I could be strapped to the driver's seat of my Datsun, a real brick being placed on the gas pedal, and off I go into the Falls Lake or the Noose River. My body will, of course, be found days later, partially decomposed and swollen with water. Some nice family out for a boating trip will be treated to a horrible surprise when the catching of that trophy bass doesn't end the way they envisioned. Or I could be in a nursing home at age 80... Or I could be in a nursing home at age 89, and I'm rattling off my thoughts to a decent-looking nurse who is injecting me with vitamins, pills, and life-liquid prolonging... Fuck. Or I could be in a nursing home at age 89, and I'm rattling off my thoughts to a decent-looking nurse who is injecting me with vitamins, pills, and life-liquid prolonging my degrading existence, where I just shit myself for the third time today. Excessive drinking can really wreak havoc on a body with some unfortunate side effects. The Surgeon General is right. What I like to imagine is that I'm now twenty years old, sipping a martini in Bora Bora, and somehow the eighty grand I found in a sandwich bag will be able to last until my golden years. To sum up, all of what I imagine is not what happens. I used to think about where my life was going, and I had such a positive outlook and a feeling that things could always get better. But as I look at the heavy stacks of cash, I have a darkening thought in my soul that now it will only get worse. I mean, I was going to be a lawyer and reenact scenes from Law and Order in the style of Sam Waterston. This is not true. I'm going for a business management degree, just in case you aren't following the bouncing ball. So, what do I do, you might be asking. Well, it sure as hell isn't taking the m So, what do I do, you might be asking. Well, it sure as hell isn't take the money and run, and I'll tell you why. I begin thinking of Nesbo and his conversation with Tony on the phone, his Sicilian accent giving me the strong impression that either Nesbo is in the Mafia or works closely with the Mafia, and that this Tony Soprano, or whatever his last name is, most definitely does and is a made man of some kind. I have watched Goodfellas, and that being my most basic compendium of mafioso knowledge, I know I have reason to worry. I wrap the money back up and pretend none of this ever happened. It doesn't erase my memory, though. It did happen, it isn't over, and now I am scared shitless. Ten minutes later, and I'm on the front stoop waiting for Tony or whoever to answer the door. The guy answers and invites me in. I don't want to go inside. It's the pl It's the last place I want to be. It's, it's the last place I want to be. This isn't true either. Hell reserves that spot. I walk in and try not to look at his face, but it's hard not to. It's crazy. He looks exactly like Robert De Niro. I'm lying again. He's heavyset and not at all dressed like what the stereotypes suggest were... <clears throat> I'm lying again. I'm lying again. He's heavyset and not at all dressed like what the stereotypes suggest regarding mob guys. He's wearing a tank top and sweatpants, and from what I garner, I don't think he has underwear on. Tony the mobster takes the money sub from me and tosses it on his couch. From around the corner walks a fake blonde with... Damn it. I am back to PNR. From around the corner walks a fake blonde with super oversized fake boobs. How do I know? Well... She's topless, and they sit funny on her chest. You know, the way a pair of enormous fake tits do, as if they have this strange otherworldly power, and that force of nature thing Sir Isaac Newton is famous for has no effect on them. Being weighed down by those giant magumbos doesn't seem to bother her much. Plus, she's obviously high. Anyway, they're gross. I've always been a fan of the small and sporty, and I'm aiming to keep it that way. The blonde has a smearing of white powder on her nose and upper lip, and she's walking unsteady on her bright fuck. Ugh. The blonde has a smearing of white. The, bl 
the blonde has a smearing of white powder on her nose and upper lip, and she's walking unsteady on her bright purple heels. I want to leave now, and it takes all my willpower and control to not fly out the door and call the cops. What stopped me was, my Datsun had engine problems, and turning the engine over wasn't always reliable. And now I'm cursing myself for not leaving it running. You dumb son of a bitch. Please don't be offended, I'm talking to myself here. Sweatpants slash semi-boner is walking back to- oh, ah, fuck. <laughs> Sweatpants slash semi-boner is walking back- semi semi or semi? Sweatpants slash semi-boner is walking back over to me, and he hands me another brown bag. Give this to Sam as payment. I seem to have lost my wallet. I don't mention he has a huge wad of cash in the sandwich bag I just gave him. I can't think of one reason to take the package from Tony. Except one. Life. You see, I have this strange fascination with still being alive after this chance meeting, and I'd like to keep doing that. Sure, I say nonchalantly, as I feel beads of sweat shoot from my forehead at Tony like a shower of sparks. You a good kid. You a good kid. I think that's, I think that's it. I thought it was, uh... Alright, okay. You a good kid, Tony is able to say. Tony is able to say. Tony is a... <clears throat> Tony is able to say over the torrential downpour cascading down his face, I'm not sweating as bad as I'm exaggerating, but it sure feels like it. I'm almost to the door when Tony hollers at me. I feel an extra-wide load of poop drop into my lower colon, threatening to present itself to the world. Hey! Before you go, take this. His fat hand holds a small folded set of bills. Oh, is that for the filly? Cause it's only ten ninety five. What? Oh, right. Ha! The filly. No, kid. This is for you. A soft wink is offered, and I barely contain the aforementioned dookie within my body. In the next span of nanoseconds, which are like really fast seconds, In the next span of nanoseconds, which are, like, really fast seconds, I'm thinking very long and very hard about what happens next. By taking the money, I'm accepting a life of crime, in a sense. If I don't accept the bot's silence, I might be in serious danger. I can't stop my brain from showing me the possible outcome of being stuffed into a garbage bag, my body cut into sections and fed to a wood chipper or dogs. Either way, it's not a good look for me. Disregarding that imagery, I say... It's okay. I don't take tip. Oh, fuck. It's okay. I don't take tips. Sam doesn't like it. I cannot have sounded more stupid if I tried. It comes out high pitched and nervous. And Tony gives me a slow, quiet stare. Try again. It's okay. I don't take tips. Sam doesn't like it. How's that? That's, uh, was that a little too extreme? It's okay. I don't take tips. Sam doesn't like it. That's a little too high. That's a little too high. It's okay. I don't take tips. Sam doesn't like it. There we go. How about that? There we go. I like that one. Sam doesn't like it. I cannot have sounded more stupid if I tried. It comes out high pitched and nervous. Tony gives me a nervous. Tony gives me a Okay. Alright. Uh where to go, where to go? And, oh. Quiet stare. Quiet stare. 
the solid the solidified turd I had the solidified turd I had earlier is gone because my bowels just turned to water and give ah uh, what just turn okay I'm gonna say gave the solidified turd I had earlier is gone the solidified turd I had earlier is gone because my bowels just turned to water and gave a gurgle I hope I ah uh, fuck The solidified turd I had earlier is gone, because my bowels just turned to water and gave a gurgle I hope only I hear. And now I'm sweating more than before, and it feels like El Nino lives in my ass crack. But what Sam doesn't know- ah, don't know. But what Sam don't know, right? Oh, fuck. That's not him. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but- what Sam don't know, right? I say, recovering. Tony gives me another wink. I'm not sure, but the second one feels like it holds a perverted twinkle to it. Ah, damn it. I'm not sure, but the second one feels like it holds a perverted twinkle to it, too. And that just sickens me. I mean, come on. His girlfriend is sitting, or should I say collapsed, right there on the couch. So, an accessory to crime it is. I grab the money from Tony's palm, feeling like I'm so far into the thick of it I might as well visit Bucket Hats, a local tattoo parlor, and get two matching Russian stars on my chest tomorrow. Getting inside my Datsun and starting it... Fuck. Um, wait, so, do you, do you want me to... Do you want me to prefer... Uh, do you want me to err on the side of present tense if there's typos with tense? I need a drink. Oh, I forgot. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'll just, I'll, unless you tell me otherwise, I'm just going to err on the side of present tense then. I think I did the opposite last time. I think I just went to, we'll see. I'm, I'm sure you, you'll be able to correct me later. Getting inside. Where are you going? Okay, getting inside. Getting inside my Datsun and starting it up, I'm thinking two things. One, thank God I didn't make a run for it because it takes four cranks before my awesome car roars, or should I say smoked, to life. And two, I just became a runner for the mob, and I can do some serious time for taking this package back to Sam. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know the item I've decided to lock in my glove compartment is a big bag of cocaine, heroin, or... Doesn't say big. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know the item I've decided to lock in my glove compartment is a bag of cocaine, heroin, or God knows what kind of illegal substance. All of the other papers, registration, checks, pins, CDs, and condoms are now lying on my seat. I know putting condoms in a glove box is not the smartest due to the heat, but like Austin Powers, I like to live dangerously, and I always forget they are there anyway. Plus, I'm really busy with school and don't have time for women. Not true and never will be. Mm, not quite, not quite. Plus, I'm really busy with school and don't have time for women. Smokes to life. Should I say smokes? Yep. Yep, I fucked that up. Or you fucked that up. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. Where is that? Or should I say smokes? Or should I say smokes? There we go. To life. To life. There we go. That's better. Or should I say smokes to life? There we go. 
Dad just became a runner. I did say, I did say that. But that's what was written. Plus, I'm really busy with school and don't have time for dinner. Not true and ever will be. Not true and ever will be. Plus, I'm really busy with school and don't have time for dinner. Not true and never will be. Plus, I'm really busy with school and don't have time for dinner. Not true and never will be. There we go. That's better. Oh, I gotta do it again. Alright. Be right back. Really? Really? Unless I'm working from a... Unless I'm working from a... An obsolete copy. Uh-oh. Might be using the wrong copy then. Come on. What? All right, I got to Um, well, you know, it could be it could be that I I'm using a copy that that I got a long time ago and not the the, the one that you sent recently. So, and because I always leave my Kindle in my booth um that that could be what it is so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go re-email myself the latest the latest uh copy and i'll be right back uh, let's see <laughs>
Hey, look, I just uh, sent another copy back, so look at that. Dalton's starting it up. Nope, this is the same one. This is the same one, it looks like. All right, I'm going to change that. Okay, wait a minute, we got one. All right, I have two different copies of this Kindle version. It says, the one's called On the Hit List and the other one's On the Hit List dash Timothy Dalton. I'm not sure which one's the later one. That one is the old. Let me look again. So, this one says smoked too. I don't know. I'm just going to move on and uh, I'm just going to keep going and uh, maybe after that, that's so weird. I, I just, I'm looking at the one, now wait a second, you sent me another one with the, was it the, was it an afterword or? Was that like a whole .mobi file, or was that just the afterward thing? No, I am confused. That looks like the acknowledgments looks like it's just the acknowledgments. So that's not it either. Okay, after this after this stream, just um send me the one that you're looking at. And I'll reload it. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one.
All right, we're we're going for chapter three now. Um, so this is the this is the first audition one that I sent to you. Um, that I forgot I actually totally dropped the ball on sending back to you with uh with um the new Taylor voice so that you could use this promotion. But I'll go ahead and send that to you today. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's just really weird. Maybe you can, maybe just go ahead and send it one more time, just in case. <clears throat> just send it, just send it right now and I'll go ahead and go get it. Sorry about all the be right backs, guys. World meet Chester. Delete this one. Search on the list. Okay, so it's completely gone from my Kindle now. Come on, show up. This one. No, nope, that's not what I wanted. Here it is, here it is. Okay, this one doesn't have Timothy Dalton. This one doesn't say dash Timothy Dalton. There it is. Okay, so this is the right one for sure. Sorry about the delay, guys. Here we go. So, yeah, when, when you guys receive chapters one and two, make sure you read carefully because I may have been reading a slightly outdated version. <clears throat> Chapter three, the phone call. Chester doesn't answer my phone call, but answers my text in four seconds. Go figure. After a brief back and forth, he calls back. I don't give away any details through my messages because the Mafia can wiretap your phone and see everything. That's not really the reason. The timing for those events to actually happen doesn't make sense at this point. I honestly just don't know what to say. Hey, Chester, by the way, I ran into some Mafia guys, and now I'm transporting at least five kilograms of cope. Cope. That shouldn't be a thought, should it? I think it, it should just stay in the narration. Hey, Chester, by the way, I ran into some mafia guys and now I'm transporting at least five kilograms of coke. One of them is my boss and I'm scared out of my mind. Uh, let's see, comms is one, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. 
All right. LSD. What's up, bro? Sorry, I had to call. Playing COD and can't be texting. I'm getting schooled by 12-year-olds. These little rat fucks have some dirty fucking mouths, Chester says as soon as I pick up. Sorry? Dude, I just called you and you didn't answer. Anyway, some shit went down. Can't talk about it over the phone, but we need to get together. Where's Taylor? Uh, I'm in my room, Chester says. Now, first off, I don't know why he always calls it his room, since if we're getting technical, it is my room as well. Tay's here too. I just handed him the controller and I'm watching him destroy. Kid is unstoppable right now. No, your mom. Fuck. Uh, uh. No, your mom sucks cocks in hell. Sorry, I hate these little kids. So what happened? I hear people screaming insults through the TV and what sounds like a Rambo movie playing, but only the good parts. I can envision Chester with his chunky face reddened from each volley of profanities but they go unnoticed by those on the other side of the connection because Chester's been too cheap to buy a decent microphone for his PS4 after the one it came with broke. Chester's Christmas gift has been... Chester's Christmas gift... Chester's Christmas gift has just been identified. That is, if I live that long. I just said I can't talk about it over the phone, idiot. This is serious, though. Turn the game off and meet me at Barnes & Noble. Turn what? Tay is straight dominating this round. He just got a nine kill streak. We gotta see it through. No! How about you die slow, you kindergarten piece of shit? Chester is not so good at comebacks. He usually repeats that... He usually repeats what the original insult is and adds some... Fuck. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? He usually repeats what the original insult is and adds some stereotypical or racial slur. It's just who he is. This is serious. Like, serious serious. I'm serious! Seriously? Chester... Chester chuckles. <laughs> oh shit, Snacks. T just got slit in the jug! <laughs> I love that. Slit in the jug! Chester is charming in his own strange, odd little way. Sometimes, without provocation, he'll abbreviate words he never did before, and it takes me a few seconds to realize what the hell he's saying. By my calculations, Taylor got stabbed in his jugular. All right. The Kentucky Fry. All right, we'll head over to the Kentucky Fry. This better be good since you're making me put on socks. I said the Barnes & Noble man. That don't work for me. There's nothing I need there. But I could totally go for one of those dubbed-down sandwiches. I ain't had one in years. Fine, but we have to make it quick. I gotta go back to the sub shop after. I hang up the phone, and with everything on my mind, I feel like I'm forgetting something. It must be important, whenever it is, because it's giving me that hot sensation in my cheeks and under my arms. I figure if it's important enough, I'll remember eventually. I figure if it's important enough, I'll remember eventually. Kentucky Fry. Come on to the Kentucky Fry. Chapter 4. Disappointment. I guess there's a reason you haven't had one in years. They don't make it anymore, I say to Chester, who has an animated sulk all over his face like a character in the Sunday Funnies. I can't think of a reasonable sil- T I can't think of a reasonable simile. I can't think of a reasonable simile, so this will have to do. Damn it. I can't think of a reasonable simile, so this will have to do. 
Ugh, what a letdown. That's all I wanted. I'm not a greedy person. I'm a good man. I do my best in life. God must hate me, Chester says, and turns away from the menu. Okay, that's a bit much. Oh, no, that's Taylor. Okay, that's a bit much. Just get something else, Taylor says. Nope, it's time for a boycott. We came all the way down here, so... Never mind, you are a child. Just give me my money back, Taylor demands, his palm out, ready to reclaim his loaned, but probably never to be reimbursed cash. It's getting late, and I don't want to interrupt this lover's quarrel, but I really need to get down to business with my two best friends. Look, fellas, we need to talk about something, so can we wrap this up? All right, I'll just get a six stripper meal, a side of biscuits, and a large pep. Chester never wastes money that's freely given, and I gather pep equals Pepsi in his newfound vocabulary. In a few moments, we're all outside. Taylor is leaning up against my Dotson, and Chester is jamming whole strips of chicken into his mouth, covered with a mix of honey mustard and barbecue, which he coins as being suicidal. I'm still not sure what he means by that. So, as I lay out the groundwork of the story to the guys, they absorb it all. After they've... Con So, as I lay out the groundwork of the story to the guys, they absorb it all. After the conclusion, I get what I expected would be the main response from both, and Chester fires off first. So, how big were they? His eyes wide, waiting for details. Huge, I say, deciding not to go into detail that her boobs did in fact remind me of Superman. They defied gravity, stood for truth, justice, and the American wet dream— or whatever that last one was. Did you get a picture? Taylor says, and crosses his arms, puffing his chest out, and partially flexing his biceps. Yeah, I just waltzed in and was like, Hey, can I take a photo of your braless bimbo? Why are you flexing? I'm not. This is just how I... Taylor... I could do that one better. I'm not. I'm not. This is just how I... <laughs> this one's hard. Taylor uncrosses his arms and shifts weight to the opposite leg. Big or small nips? Chester asks with a grin like a child on Christmas morning. They were perfect, but her face could have used a bag. Look, I... Were they like dinner plates? Dark? Light? Were they even? I want some details for the spank bank. After Chester's latest chime in, I can't take it anymore. Look, this is serious. I think, I mean... I think I'm in trouble with all this, and the one thing you guys take away from it is that I saw some cook at- Fuck. I think I'm in trouble with this. Uh. I think I'm in- I think I'm in trouble with all this, and the one thing you guys take away from it is that I saw some coked out chick treating this guy's house like a nude beach. Boobs. Boobs. Chester and Taylor say in unison. I ignore it and open the car door, unlocking the glove compartment. With stealthy movements, I show them the package Tony gave me, trying to make sure no one else is watching. What's that? Chester says. Flour to make delicious pastries. Some sort of drugs, you idiot! It's gotta be coke or heroin or something. I don't know. I grew up watching the same movies as you. We should take it, Taylor says as he takes us... Taylor says as he takes a step forward, eyeing the wrapped brick of drugs. Fuck. Yeah, totally. That sounds like a great idea. Go for it, Scarface. I make to hand it to him. Only one problem. When I don't deliver this crap to Sam, he's going to know who has it, and us sharing the same dorm room won't be good for either of you. Also, what the fuck do we know about dealing drugs? I buy a dime bag every now and then. But it's for medical and no. I mean, medicine or. Oh. Chester struggles to say. Medicinal? I ask. Yeah, that's the one. Remember when I tore my shoulder muscle when we were kids? Well, it still bothers me. That's why I can't hit the gym like I want. Chester begins rotating his arm in a slow circle and rubs the socket joint as if the imaginary pain has suddenly resurfaced. 
I don't recall this tale he is speaking of or how he injured himself, but if Chester has told the story before and I don't remember, it usually means it was so dumb that I cast it to the far reaches of my brain. Oh, yeah, I forgot, totally. But that's not what I'm getting at. What I am trying to say is that people get murdered all the time over drug deals gone bad. Not to be confused with girls gone wild. I hold out the drugs farther, tempting Taylor or Chester to relieve me of my unwanted burden. Taylor takes a step away from the cocaine block as if being close to the substance might give him cancer. Proximity to cocaine has not been found to cause cancer. You guys didn't really think that through, did you? I toss the drugs down onto the passenger side floorboard of my car and close the door. It bounces back and I have to give it a more forceful slam for it to lock into place. The behavior Taylor has just exhibited is class... The behavior Taylor has just exhibited is his classic fashion. Show his strengths slash machismo. Is it machismo or machismo? I always forget. Show his strengths slash machismo. Why are you giving me the fucking word of the day? Machismo. Machismo. Show his strength. The behavior Taylor has just exhibited. The behavior Taylor has just exhibited is his classic fashion. Show his strength slash machismo, and as soon as it's tested, back down like a pair of cold, shrunken balls. Taylor says, Maybe we should call the cops. They can come on down and we can set up a sting operation or something. Maybe we can get a reward? For the first time in a long time, Chester speaks up with something useful. Let's not get all cray about this. Calling the 5 is a bad idea. The only real crime here is that the menu is missing my meal of choice. A quick clarification. The first part of his comment was the useful one. The one where we shouldn't contact the police. I guess... I say, still pondering. Listen, bro, Gary might be a douchebag, but he is absolutely right when he says you can't trust the popo. Here's a recap for you. Gary is a mega turd. That is for sure. Most people assume that Gary is Chester's stepdad because he is always referred to by his first name, but in truth, Gary is his biological father. Ah, uh, did I fuck that up? But in truth, Gary is his biological father. Nope, it's fine. Okay. Maybe you're right. The less involved I am, the better. I can just claim ignorance. I know nothing about nothing, right? Why I'm listening to Chester's advice right now, I am not sure. After all, he was the one who gave my grandma a goodbye card when she was in the hospital. To be fair, he was right, and we all knew she wasn't going to make it. But Chester just doesn't... Well, he just never thinks about the feelings of others when it comes to his decision-making skills. I check the time. I still need to give the bag of five to ten that I'd served to Sam in at least fifteen... That's such a good line. I still need to give the bag of five to ten to... I still need to give that bag of five to ten that I'd served to Sam in at least fifteen minutes or my ass was toast. That's when I have that gnawing at my... Si That's when I get that gnawing at my insides again. When I have that. That's when I have that gnawing at my insides again. It's that all-too-familiar feeling that I'm forgetting something that I felt earlier. At this exact moment across town, something is indeed happening, and I'm going to feel the repercussions from it later. The last two minutes of our discussion conclude with Chester still in a funk because the double down was no longer available at the KFC. Ah. Uh. The last two minutes of our discussion conclude with Chester still in a funk because the double down was no longer available at the KFC, and it's decided that I need to hand off the incriminating evidence and hope that this special delivery service I provided is a one-time thing. 
it isn't. Whew. It's really fun to do these long sentences, even though, like, it's really hard. <laughs> it's really challenging. It's also... It's also great. All right. Need more water. Last one, I swear. All right, all right, chapter five. <clears throat> chapter five, the remembrance. I'm back at my gorm, snoozing like a baby and catching Z's like it's my sole mission in life. Actually, I'm staring at the clock display that says it's after 2 a.m., and I haven't closed my eyes since I returned. I've been locked in an epic mental battle regarding right and wrong, and contemplating how much time I will end up serving in any maximum security prison across the continental United States. And I'm positive I'll end up there. When I'm grilled by the cops or detectives, and later a judge in court, and I will be, I know in the floating viscous purple matter that is my soul that I will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I don't think souls are supposed to be represented, as I mentioned, but for some reason I can't help but picture it that way. Anyway, Guantanamo is where I will go for sure. I keep reassuring myself with a grim outlook that I can't seem to shake. Ah! <clears throat> anyway, Guantanamo is where I will go for sure. I keep reassuring myself with the grim outlook that I can't seem to shake. I envision Sam Waterston, the ace district attorney from Law and Order, saying, Okay, I'm gonna do an impression here, because it's gonna be fun. I just have to look him up. <laughs> uh, oh. Sam Waterston. Videos. Oh, this guy. Okay, hold on. I think I think he sounds. Uh, uh, where is it? Around there somewhere. Hello, I'm Sam Waterston. That's a little more crisp than I thought. But on TV, I play someone who does. In real life, the challenges of the new. The challenge. The challenges. The challenges. Quality reporting. Investigative journalism. Investigative journalism. journalism. They can do so much to hold. So okay. okay, I'll try it. Are you aware that 32 states still enforce the death penalty? North Carolina being among them? Yeah, it's official. I'm going to die young. I can still hear Taylor tearing it up in a multiplayer battle online, but the volume has been severely muted, and I can only make out snatches of dialogue and the occasional frag grenade or bouncing Betty. Chester has long since fallen asleep with a bag of Doritos at his side and the remnants scattered on his favorite Enjoy Coke t-shirt. His TV is still on and a rerun of The Big Bang Theory is playing. Chester does not watch that show. He, as well as Taylor... <clears throat> he as well as Taylor and I, thinks it is a god- He, 
as well as Taylor and I, think it is god-awful terrible. Unfortunately, the channel happens to... <clears throat> Unfortunately, the channel happens to also air episodes of The Mentalist and Elementary, which Chester says makes his brain function... Fuck. Unfortunately, the channel happens to also... Fuck. Unfortunately, the channel happens to also air episodes of The Mentalist and Elementary, which Chester says makes his brain function better. If there is proof in his logic, I have yet to see it accurately tested. Remember that thing I said I was forgetting? Well, I'm about to remember it in 4.8 seconds. At this exact moment, I barely hear... We are losing... Okay, I forgot to ask. What is this from? We are losing this fight. Is this, is this from Call of Duty? We are losing this fight. I can imagine, like, a bad... The bad voice actor going, We are losing this fight! Or something like that. That's what I figured. Let's see if I can find a sample of that. I'm looking it up, I'm trying to see. What? What the hell is this? That's not it. What is up? It's Mikey. It's no. Throwback Thursday. What it is, not gonna I'm find it. Fake. I never play COD, so. I'm just going to say it as a. Uh... At this exact moment, I barely hear, We are losing this fight, come from the speakers of Taylor's TV in the confined living room area of our dorm. My brain makes a connection that is altogether super stupid and super late. You see, fight happens to rhyme with might, kite, right, tight, tonight, a two-syllable word, but still it's an acceptable rhyme, light, and finally my mind finishes this silly internal game with flight. Holy crap! I completely forgot about Liz Jenkins and our plans to watch The Art of Flight. Is it too late to call? Yes, I know it is, and she would be superbly upset. With my earlier forgetfulness of our plans together, it will only inflate the negative effect to come, given the hour of night. That could have been said better. With my earlier forgetfulness of our plans together, it will only inflate the negative effect to come, given the hour of night. I have this insane thought that perhaps she got busy too, and maybe I can be the one who pretends to be angry that I was stood up by her. But trying to put that convoluted idea into a working scenario falls dead in its tracks like... Well, like some animal being hunted by a crazed, psychotic redneck poacher. In my mind, I see every potential conversation with Liz and... <clears throat> I said Liz. In my mind, I see every potential conversation with Liz ending in... She never wants to talk to me again. So I think back on every shed of dread. <sighs> so I think back on every shred of Jedi training I have received in regards to women. All from romance movies. It should all work out according to plan if I just come clean before she has the chance to find out from someone else, and I'm forced to give her the details after the fact, and she no longer wants to speak with me. We've all seen it in the movies and heard a woman say it in the theater while it played. He should have just told her the truth to begin with, and everything would have been fine. So, this is where Operation Spill the Beans is born. The 
this book is so fun. Chapter six, the choice to confide. Are you freaking serious? Liz turns on her cute little wedged heels, then spins around to face me again. I'm done. Don't talk to me anymore. And just like that, she's gone. Out of my life forever. That line is for pure... <clears throat> that line is for pure dramatics. She's still in my biology 201 class, remember? I'll see her tomorrow at 10.05 in the morning. God, I really hope you're paying attention. Well, crap. Screw you, Hollywood, with your false hope and your fictitious endings. I like to imagine this happens when I told her the news. Rain is pouring down on us like in one of those... I like to imagine this... Okay. I like to imagine this happens when I told her the news. Rain is pouring down on us like in one of those crappy rom-coms. I end up looking both pathetic and sexy as hell at the same time with my hair drenched and my shirt soaked through. And although I'm incapable of crying due to my extreme manliness, the rain streaming down my face tells a different tale, and it appears that I have a quasi-sensitive side. But instead, I have gel in my hair that couldn't tame the bedhead, and a wrinkled social distortion shirt with the words 1945 on it, and an atomic bomb exploding over Hiroshima. This getup makes me look like a dirty hobo and a supreme racist. In actuality, the song is an anti-war punk ballad. Mm. In actuality, the song is an anti-war punk ballad. Now, I want you to consider this, fellas. It doesn't matter what you do or say, it'll never be the right thing at a moment like this. There will always be another way you should have done or said something, and trust me, the girl or woman you are talking to will let you know. Let's pretend you could go back in time and relive the event again. Even if you chose the one that was mentioned, it wouldn't work. And I'll tell you why. There would be an altogether different response needed. The truth is that women want to hear something different no matter what you say, because showing you just how horribly wrong you were is what they do best. It gives them the upper hand, and now you are snared in the shoulda, coulda, woulda done trap. It can take years or an infinity to escape. I would have loved to hang with her, maybe even get to know her just a little better. And who knows? Get married and have two or three kids! Come on now, let's be serious for a minute. I'm 19. That's moving it just a bit too quick. Give me at least six years to get that doctorate I've been talking about first. Right now, I'm stuck pondering the relevance of myself in Liz's life. It seems to me that everyone is in a constant conscience... Oop, conscious. It seems to me that everyone is in a constant conscious or sub... It seems to me that everyone is in a constant conscious or subconscious battle to remain relevant. I am reminded of the bazillion documentaries that spoke... Fuck. I am reminded of the bazillion documentaries that spoke of the end of the world in the years leading up to the fateful day of December 25th, 2012, according to the Mayan calendar. Well, it's 2014, and where are those documentaries now? Irrelevant. They faded into the abyss of nothingness like a fart lost in a tornado. And all those highly paid doctors and physicists and seismologists who believed with... Fuck. This one's... Uh... And, all those... and all those highly paid... And all those highly paid doctors and physicists and seismologists who believe with deep vigor the end was nigh... Believed. Damn it. And all those highly paid doctors and physicists and seismologists who believed with deep vigor the end was nigh... Where are they? I'm not sure myself, but they definitely didn't hang around to explain why they were incorrect. You see, nobody likes to be wrong. And I'm no exception. Which is why I feel terrible that Liz believes I've done something wrong. Perhaps I have. But, as I watch her butt literally round the corner, not conversing with her again isn't what scares me the most right now. I look at my watch, the expensive one I referenced earlier, and see it's closing in on four o'clock. My shift at the sub shop starts in less than an hour, and I have this really bad feeling Sam is going to make me go on another dirty money run. Why do I know this, you might be wondering? 
Why do I know this, you might be wondering? Oh, because I forgot to mention that last night as I handed him the drugs, he said I had done such a great job with the delivery that he would need me to make another one today. You can see how this isn't a great life changer for me. And with a nickname like LSD, that alone will convince any jury to send me straight to the slammer. I feel like I may have forgotten one minor detail. There could be more, but this one feels more important than others right now. So let's get back to seeing Liz tomorrow. I really hope that does happen, unless she decides to ditch class. So perhaps I should clarify the where and when of the events I am cataloging for you. Even if she does decide to show her pretty face in biology tomorrow, it will be the last time I see her for ten days. In case I haven't brought it up yet, failed to inform you, or it just plain skipped my mind, tomorrow... Oops. Tomorrow is Friday, March 7th, 2014. Now, that may not mean much to anyone else, but for those currently enrolled at Duke University, it means spring break starts. So, who's ready for backstory? If you aren't, skip forward to Chapter 8, because Chapter 7 is about to begin, and it will be a flashback of the life and times of four good friends. Didn't that feel like a zinger to just toss in? Because by easy math, there should be only three, right? Well, that's why it's called a backstory, and you are about to be filled in. Chester, Taylor, and I didn't just happen to become roomies for no reason. We've known each other since before grade school. Our first encounter was at La Peep... La Peep? No, not Breakfast Place. Our first encounter... Our first encounter was at La Petite... La Petite... Our first encounter was at La Petite Academy, or a place we like to call daycare. Next chapter. All right. All right. Chapter 7, Life and Times of Four Good Friends. <clears throat> La Petite. La Petite. <clears throat> Chapter 7, The Life and Times of Four Good Friends. Chester has always been chunky. As a baby, it was considered adorable. As a toddler, precious. When he hit childhood, age four to ten, his parents said it was baby fat that refused to let go. By middle school, it was called his phase, and he was supposed to grow out of it. High school came along, and we all knew it. The fat... Oh. High school. High school came along, and we all knew it... The fat was here to stay. Damn it. High school came mm. High school came along and we all knew it the fat was here to stay. Now to see him enter the shared oh, damn it. Now to see him enter the shared dorm's shower room and disrobe well, it's disturbing. Taylor has more or less stayed the same. He was a good looking kid and turned into the guy all the chicks wanted in college. I won't go further into his physical appearance, as it usually lowers my self-esteem by margins I'm not comfortable with. However, he has always been the tough one. Or so he likes to pretend. We all believe the reality is that he's afraid to have his pretty face disfigured and therefore backs away from the con- Ah, fuck. We all believe the reality is that he's afraid to have his pretty face disfigured and therefore backs away from confrontation. As for me, meet the middle ground. I've always been the guy who never really had a clique, but at the same time fit in everywhere. I had some brains, so the nerdy guys and girls liked me, and I paid just enough attention to sports, and had the endurance for it, so the jocks never threatened wedgies or stuffed me in a gym locker. Okay, so I mentioned a fourth musketeer, and that is where Henry Gomez comes into play. Henry was one... <clears throat> Henry was the one we all wanted to be. At first, it was because he was two years older than we were. Later, we aspired to be... Later, we aspired to be like him because he... Later, we aspired to be like him because he was smart, good-looking, built like a tank, 
even in high school, and with enough moral fiber to be closely related to Jesus himself. In fact, that part is semi-true. Henry's real name is Enrique, and his father's name was indeed Jesus. But it's pronounced the way they do in Mexico. Right out of high school with... Right out of high school, Henry joined up with the Navy, jumped up the chain quickly, and last we heard, he was going for SEAL training. Our enduring bond began from the usual thing. A discussion on whether Pinky and the Brain could have totally taken on and beaten the toxic adventure. Fuck! Adventure. I love Pinky and the Brain, by the way. Our enduring bond began from the usual thing. A discussion on whether Pinky and the Brain could have totally taken on and beaten the toxic adventure. We all agreed brains over brawn. Except Taylor. Our family lives where... Our family lives? Our family lives were where we greatly dip. Our family lives were where we greatly differed. Damn. Motorcycle outside. The same thing we do every night, Pinky. <clears throat> Our family lives were where we greatly differed. Henry has four brothers and two sisters. I won't go into names, most of which I can't pronounce. Chester was the contrast to Henry. He is an only child and never learned the importance of sharing with siblings. His constant disregard for others' feelings and lack of a verbal filter stems from that. Taylor has one older sister. Hmm. Um, yes, this is Ableton. Did I mention? Oh, 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 uh, new program was, it's, uh, OBS, OBS. I can't remember what the, I can't remember what it stands for. I'll have to look it up. OBS. Taylor has one older sister. She's eight years his senior, and of course, with the same great genes that Taylor possesses, was the hottie that captured ours fast. Was the hottie that captured our fascinations. In middle school, Taylor charged us money so Chester and I could sneak into her room and watch her dress. Henry, with his solid convictions, never took part. I grew out of those juvenile ways. Every now and then I feel a relapse coming on, though. And Chester... Well, Chester never evolved. In fact, there might have been some regression. Yep, that's it. Open broadcaster software, yep. There might have been some regression. Okay, let's run it. I'm a middle child of three. Neither favored from the beginning nor spoiled in the end, which may have had a hand in my fitting in at high school. With time turning by and Chester being the sole child, his parents were able to afford to send him to Duke. Albeit barely. Taylor's parents came from money and had sent his sister there, who graduated with honors, etc., magna cum laude, so they were not financially hurt in the slightest to send another child. I, on the other hand, had to make it happen. My brother, so close on my heels and not the brightest, wasn't going to score himself a scholarship. Wasn't going to score himself a scholarship. Wasn't going to score himself a scholarship. So it would end up that only one of us went to college if I didn't do well. With a solid 4.0 and a 15... Ah, damn it. With a solid 4.0 and a 15.80 on the SAT, I was able to gain passage to Duke University and join my friends. Now with real-world problems on my shoulders like bills, living expenses, and eating food, I've slipped to a 3.4. I think I could do that one better. Now with real-world problems on my shoulders like bills, living expenses, and eating food, I've slipped to a 3.4. There we go. <laughs> Hera haunt. No microphone, smiley. I don't even know what that means. 
To put things plainly, Chester and Taylor don't work. Taylor doesn't need to, and Chester, being a neighbor in the same subdivision as Taylor since childhood, has been supported by Taylor for so long it just seems ingrained into both their lifestyles. For Taylor, it's as if he's expected to do it. For Chester, it's as if it's expected to be done. Now that we have all grown up, we still have great relations with our families, but spring break happens to be our time. If funds allow it, a beach trip is usually in order. This year, that trip won't be happening. Taylor has volunteered as an intern at Wabash, Ingalls, and Lynch, a law firm in downtown Raleigh, and I can't afford the high gas prices the economy has thrown in my path. Real-world problems have reared their ugly heads. Thanks, Obama! I had placed myself on the schedule to work at the sub shop for solid eights every day from now. For solid eights. I had placed myself on the schedule to work at the sub shop for solid eights every day from now until spring break. And I had placed myself on the schedule. I had placed myself on the schedule to work at the sub shop for solid eights every day from now until spring break ends, and I'm sure if I hadn't had my... I had placed myself on the schedule to work at the sub shop for solid eights every day from now until spring break ends, and I'm sure if I hadn't, my job wouldn't be waiting for me afterwards. I can't quit outright, as now I'm terrified that I've seen too much and Sam might just do something rash. My plan at the moment is to quit when the school year is over in about two months and hope that doesn't rouse suspicion. What I don't know, however, is that life is about to throw me another curveball I'm not ready for. Whew. Starting to get steamy in here. God. It's funny, I can feel, I can feel the room dropping in temperature by two degrees a second. It's funny, all I have to do is open that door for, for like a few seconds, and I have this ventilation system here that, when it's on, When it's on, it makes a little bit of noise. Well, it, it can actually make a lot of noise, but... Um, yes, it actually did, but it didn't have any ventilation. And it had a sliding door that didn't work very well. Oh, warm! <laughs> yeah. It does have venting. Um, it's got a... It's got a little system, but it's, it makes noise, so it's like kind of pointless, and if I can just open the door every, you know, 30 minutes for, you know, 10 seconds at a time, no real reason to have it. <clears throat> Chapter 8. The Fraud. It's, it's my, my fourth day into spring break, break and I've made two, two deliveries for Sam. Nope. Two, two deliveries. It's, it's my fourth day into spring break, break and I've made two deliveries for Sam. He's, He's been keeping an ever watchful eye on me, but still lashes out with verbal attacks. While out on a normal transport of a meatball hoagie, my cell phone vibrates in my pocket. I still don't know why I forget to pull it out and place it in the cup holder when I drive. I answer with my standard, hello, rather than, obscene, rather than an obscene remark, because by the caller ID, I don't know who it is. Hello, sir. There's no pause, and the woman goes right into her speech. This is Bostrom Ford. Is this Mr. Alice D'Angelo? Normally, I hang up when I get these calls, but I'm intrigued. I need a new car, and maybe there's a great special right now that requires nothing down. Yes, this is he. I've always felt dumb saying that line, but on the phone it sounds very official and can't be avoided when I'm on autopilot. Hi, yes. We're calling because there's been an issue with the paperwork you signed the other day. 
We, we can't, can't verify, verify your address, address and, and we won't be able to send out your statements until it's correct. So, so I was wondering if we might have just missed a digit on the home address. I'm super confused at the moment, but I ask anyway. What address do you have? Let me see. Uh, we have 1278 Southwest Myrtle. I just gurgled. <laughs> Did a little chewy. We have 1278 Southwest Myrtle Park Drive, Lake Winnipesaukee. Oh, fuck. Lake Winnipesaukee? Winnipesaukee, is that right? There we go. Lake Winnipesaukee. All right. What, what about Bob? Bob? <laughs> That's it's been, been so long since I've seen that movie. movie. Oh, no. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh shit. Lake Winnipesaukee, New Hampshire. <laughs> New Hampshire? That's what it says. What the shit? <laughs> I love that. What the shit? I want to say, but I'm trying to keep things professional, so I go with, okay, hold on. What's this for? This is for the 2014 Ford Mustang you purchased? Are you shitting me? I wanted to blurt it out. I want to blurt it out, but I managed to choke hold on my lower class tongue. I haven't bought a car in two years, ma'am. It says you put down 2000 in cash. Is your social security... XXXXXXXXX. After this little event in my life, I don't give out my... Is it... I'm going to do that differently here. After this little event in my life, I don't give out my SSN anymore. Even though I recently became a member of LifeLock, I still don't feel comfortable throwing it out there. Holy f Holy shit, fuck, Jesus Christ, this is bullshit! I've just had my identity stolen! Then I say, Holy shit, fuck, Jesus Christ, this is bullshit! I've just had my identity stolen! Excuse me? The woman sounds horrified, and I can't understand why. Then it dawned on me that I had lost my reserve and was still blasting off profanities out loud to myself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Listen, there's been a misunderstanding. I think we've both been taken for a ride we weren't prepared for. I think the police need to be notified. Sir, I just need some information from you regard. I hope. I hang up like I should have done when I didn't recognize the phone number, but that wouldn't have been good either. I hang up like I should have done when I didn't recognize the phone number, but that wouldn't have been good. I ah, fuck. Why is that fucking me up? I hang up like I should have done when I didn't recognize the phone number, but that wouldn't have been good either. The problem would just metastasize. I got the word right and I couldn't go. Couldn't keep going. The problem would just metastasize while I went along with my life, unaware. Thinking fast on my feet, I Google search LifeLock and make the decision to become a member instantly. 
of course, I will only be protected after the fact, but at least nothing more can happen, right? I call up a credit agency and find out that everything is completely fine with my life, if that includes having a $235,000 boat taking up space on my report. I'm screwed. I order my report and send a backup copy of it to my email so I can get a better look at the finer details later. I make two more calls, one to Chester, who thinks it's funny for a second and wants to take the boat to the lake. My second is to my father, a conversation I don't want to have, but he reassures me it will all get worked out. Although they are kind words, I feel this mess isn't just going to die away. After hanging up, I stare out the window for a long moment, not sure what to do or how much trouble I'm in. I look at the passenger seat, and the meatball hoagie still sits there, having not been delivered during this chaotic crisis. I'm so deep in crap at the moment. I no longer care. I rip open the bag and take a glorious bite, barely chewing and almost unable to swallow. I glance at the receipt. Looks like Eddie Willard in Trinity Heights will be getting his next sandwich on the house. Oh. Thank you, thank you. Oh, she said, Sin says, Wade read the $235,000 boat part. That was good. Yep, off the cuff. Off the cuff. Did you like that obnoxious drinking sound? All right, one more chapter, guys. One more chapter. And I have to get going. Wow, we're almost at two hours. I'm just having too much fun. Chapter 9. Help, Help from, from the law. law. I'm not sure if everything is connected, but I figure I can kill two birds with one stone. One, one of my favorite things, one of my favorite Rickyisms from uh, <clears throat> Trailer Park Boys is... Uh, I, figure, I, figure I, <laughs> I figure I'd get two birds stoned at once. Oh my god. Brilliant. Brilliant. As I, oh, nope, that's not what we want. As I walk into the police department, a sense of guilt washes over me and holds me captive by the doorway like a straitjacket. I'm not sure how long I stand there, but at some point I'm noticed by the desk sergeant. Do you want an obnoxious noise, uh, obnoxious, uh, obnoxious voice for this cop? Or does it need, should it be a surprise? Can I help you? Comes the voice of a ridiculously hot police officer. She is smoking in her uniform, and my every thought of Liz Jenkins evaporates. She's not really hot at all. She sports a very suspicious mole on her cheek, which also holds a few surly hairs erupting from every direction. She's also in her mid-fifties, and based on her other attribute, ah. She's also in her mid-fifties, and based on her other attributes, doesn't take more than 100 steps a day. Um, yes. I'd like to talk with one of the detectives in either fraud, vice, or both, if possible. She gives me a strange look, as if he... She She gives me a strange look as if she knows my socks don't match. Are you putting me on, boy? Boy? I sprouted hair in my nethers when I was eleven. But I'll let that particular malicious comment slide. No, I'm not putting you on. However, I think Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs would have gone crazy for so much skin. Side note, from her unhealthy pallor, I was positive it doesn't rub the lotion on its skin. Two Mountain Dews, a Snickers bar, and a half hour later, I'm standing on the opposite side of a jail cell begging to be let loose. I'm kidding. I'm sitting in a rather hot, wooden, and uncomfortable chair. The placard on the desk reads, Detective Archibald Klein. The room is thick with cigarette smoke from two decades past, burned into the ceiling tiles, and it's stinging in... And it's stinging my eyes. Detective Klein steps back into the office and scoots into his seat. Okay, son. Let's hear it. 
For the next hour, I recount the events of the last few days. Then he asks me to go through it again. Maybe he thinks I'm guilty of something and is checking to see if my story deviates from the original telling. It doesn't. I explain the strange substance I assume was cocaine but can't confirm. At this point, he says that until it can be proven, I have nothing. He also yammers on that the identity theft issue isn't a vice problem. I'd have to handle that with the fraud unit, and he knows a guy in that department who can help. Well, I hope so. I mean, he's only been working here for close to 20 years. Or maybe I guess networking then wasn't what it is today. <clears throat> yes, Trailer Park Boys is a show that you must watch. It's one of the most hilarious shows that's ever been made. <clears throat> So, what about Sam Nesbo? I ask. That's it? You can't do anything? I'm getting nervous because I'd hoped they would just cuff him and I could get on with my fancy life. No, nope. not at the moment. We call it due process. Ah, uh, that's sounding a little too much like Tony. Um. Okay, Scott. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, we'll go, yeah, this one. All right. Nope, not at the moment. We call it due process. We call it due process. I want to do this better. <clears throat> no, not at the moment. We call it due process. What about the stacks of cash I have to... What about the stacks of cash I have to keep muling back and forth? That has to be something fishy we can arrest him on. Having a lot of cash at once. Having a lot of cash at once isn't against the law, Klein says. We would need more than that. More than that turns out to mean they need both the drugs and the money at the same time, or the drugs by themselves. I glance at my wristwatch and see it's after 7.30, and I'd never made that last delivery in Trinity Heights. Also on the list of not dones, I'd left my cell phone in my car and never checked in with Sam. I'm sure by now the angry customer with... I just distracted myself. I'm sure by now the angry customer has called in wanting to know where his hoagie is. By my calculations, I figure it's making the long, perilous, and disgusting journey through my small intestines. So what about me? I can't just go back there! I'm verging on panic now. I don't want to return to the sub shop and face Sam. Plus, he's going to be pissed about the whole missed delivery thing. You're kind of going to have to. We can't just put you into witness protection. Technically, there's nothing to prove your life is even in danger. My heart rate has a difference of opinion. You can die from tachy tachycardia, tachycardia, tachycardia. You can, die from you can die from tachycardia, right? You can die from tachycardia, right? Look. Look, kid. If you can get one of those bags of cocaine or whatever it is into his hands, I can do something about that. If not, then we'll have to part ways. Mr. Nesbo might get wind of our meeting today if he's as connected to the Mafia as you think he is. My colon is either bubbling in discomfort of smi- <laughs> My colon is either bubbling in discomfort of my situation, or the hokey isn't sitting well at all. I'm not sure which one is the catalyst. I should probably leave. If I do, I have to head back to Sam. I've wasted enough time. Here. Detective Klein jumps to his feet and hands me his card. If you ever get the chance to bring that bastard down, call. I take the card, wrap it against my knuckles for a second, then stuff it into my wallet. Thanks, I say. But in all honesty, I'm not sure why. He hasn't done shit for me. I walk out the door, not bothering to talk with anyone in the fraud department. That will have to wait for another day. My keys have trouble unlocking my passenger door, as usual. Perhaps it hasn't been mentioned yet, either, but the lock on my driver's side door doesn't work, so I'm the guy who has to crawl in and out through the passenger side. Unlocking my phone, I see I have eleven missed calls and two text messages waiting for me. Seven are from the sub shop, one from my dad, two from Chester, and... My heart flutters. One from Liz. Out of the eleven calls, there are nine voicemails. 
Sam is screaming in all seven of... <clears throat> Sam is screaming on all seven of his. I really don't want to head back there. Tony might be slipping me cash for every delivery, but I haven't spent a penny. Yet. <clears throat> Ugh, that was weak. But I haven't spent a penny. Yet. But I haven't spent a penny. Yet. Uh Tony might be slipping me cash for every delivery, but I haven't spent a penny. Yet. I listen to Chester's message next. <sighs> Yo, L! Hit me back up! I got a soup fly idea for Zombie Jesus Day. What say we head down to Will B and hit up the walk for some bergs, then after cruise over to the camp, get a few ippas, and find a place to chillax? I've drawn a complete blank. I don't even know what the hell he's trying to say, except perhaps Zombie Jesus Day might be Easter. When I finally check Liz's message, my fluttering heart sinks. She apologizes for calling. She meant to call her friend Ellen, whose name is right above mine on her contact list. Damn. Still, my brain attempts to remain positive. Perhaps she's just saying that. She isn't. Turns out it was a misdial after all. I check my text messages next. Taylor is heading back from the law firm where he interns and wants to hang at a club called Lucky's, but everyone in the area refers to it as Get Lucky. 75% of the time, someone does. So the odds are ever in our favor, according to the Hunger Games. I really do need to cut loose. The stresses in my head are moving throughout my entire body, and I feel lethargic. Plus, I haven't used my fake ID in a while. On the subject of IDs, I know I just found out my identity was stolen earlier to- mm. I know I just found out my identity was stolen earlier today, but I don't really care if that rule is tweaked if the person illegally representing myself is me. Zombie Jesus Day, yes. Alright, so that's our first day of On the Hit List. Hope you guys had fun. Um, <clears throat> so tomorrow I'm going to be doing another 20% of the book. That was about 21% here. Um, things start to get crazier and crazier as this book keeps going. And uh, I'm excited. Um, I'm only doing two days for this one because, I mean, after tomorrow, the rest is like spoilers, right? You guys have to have a reason to buy the book. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad you guys are having fun with it. Uh, make sure tomorrow, 7 o'clock, um, same, same place and time, and uh, make sure you tell everybody. And if you're seeing the replay, come join us tomorrow. So... Yeah, that was that was a that was a long one. Two hours and nine minutes. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time.